Pacha with the weekly Pele report. You betcha, it's another one. <laughs> April 5th, 2017. Moon is in Leo. Gonna stay there until tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow, Thursday, she goes into Virgo. Stays in Virgo all the way till Sunday. And then, yes indeed, on Monday, we have the great full moon. Oh my God, because the sun has been coming along in conjunction to Uranus. And the moon is going to come up and conjoin with Jupiter, which is Jupiter opposite Uranus. And of course, both of those are square Pluto. So look at that chart at the beginning. Okay, and check out this grand T-square with the Sun Uranus opposite Moon Jupiter square to Pluto. And that's not all that's going on. No siree. Today, Saturn goes retrograde. On Sunday, Mercury goes retrograde. So we're going to have all kinds of retrogrades. I talked about it last week about reflection. Okay, and about looking at what is coming and what has already been. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that today. As you can see, today's mantra, this week's mantra, does again have to do with the past. All of this retrograde stuff going on. So yeah, we've got, uh, we got a lot to talk about here today. And amidst all of it, we have Saturn in square to this Chiron, which is conjunct Venus. And I want to talk to you a lot, okay, today, because it's very interesting, okay? Venus is square Saturn on Saturday, okay? And it's conjunct Chiron this whole week. So we're going to be really feeling Venus Saturn is not exactly a, a warm, gushy, open heart, now is it? No. Saturn is wanting to put form, boundaries, possibly limitations, has a little bit to do with loneliness, feelings of isolation. So we want to just kind of really look at what that means for all of us, what that is about, what Creator is trying to do here. <laughs> Let me look at the camera and talk about it. Ciao, ciao. All right, everybody. Uh, let's see here now. I've got so much to say, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> uh, let's look at it kind of like this Uranus-Pluto square has been going on since 2012. Uranus was conjunct Pluto in the mid-60s, 64, 65, 66. Yeah, this was, we had this Pluto-Uranus conjunction. And I've been talking about it for years, right? Uranus has come home. And the thing is now, why 2012 to 2017? That's five years. That is a long square, <laughs> you know? And it would really be over, I think. The effects would be over if it wasn't for Jupiter coming around into Libra, you know? and connecting, you know, squaring Pluto, opposing Uranus, coming back, opposing Uranus, squaring Pluto. Jupiter has, has extended this Uranus-Pluto square like longer than need be, <laughs> you know, longer than it, it, you know, it should be, right? And of course, there's no accidents, right? You know, Creator is kind of saying, you know what, you know, we gotta, we gotta get Jupiter in there before we can let off the pressure. Because that's what this, you know, this square is about pressure. And if I think about it, Uranus is moving through Aries for seven years, okay, from 2011 to 2018, starting a new 85 year cycle. And to me, it's like giving birth to the new paradigm. It's all this talk about autonomy, about sovereignty, okay, about, you know, my individual personal expression and, you know, my need to be independent and free and liberated and awakening and enlightenment. This is Uranus moving through Aries. Sex, the masculine, how I assert, how I start, I should be free. Uranus Aries is all about freedom and 
It's this birthing of a new Uranus rules Aquarius. We're moving into the age of Aquarius. But it's square to Pluto. It's great. I saw this uh, Facebook uh, group. It's a, it's a private group. Uh, it's called the Pluto Group. <laughs> I didn't join the group. It's a closed group, but you know, just the picture. Okay, you know the, the uh, you know the timeline. You got to check out the characters. Okay, it's a perfect Pluto in Capricorn. Pluto is heavy. Pluto is intense. The, you know, the front guy's wearing a suit coat and a tie, and he means business. Okay, you can tell he's representing some bank <laughs> or mortgage company or government or so you know some you know limiting established patriarchal institution. This is Pluto moving through Capricorn. Yeah, this is the past. This is the patriarchy. This is, you know, the establishment of science and, you know, ego and authority and power and control. The Illuminati, all right? If I was to, like, I was thinking, if I was to make, like, a Sabian symbol, you know, and just come up with a Sabian symbol for, like, this whole... You know, this whole time period that we're in, this like 2016, 17, whatever, while Uranus is squaring this Pluto with Jupiter over there, I, I would look at it as um, a mother giving birth in a dangerous jungle. You know? It's like we're giving birth to a new age. We're giving birth to new freedom, new self-expression, and that square to Pluto okay in Capricorn says you know there's lions and tigers in this jungle okay and they want to devour they want to eat <laughs> they want to kill okay this new found this new you know birth this new baby yeah you know this new paradigm this new reality okay it's a hostile environment Pluto is just kind of like hanging out over there yeah and now we have this full moon going on right with this and Jupiter and Libra what's Jupiter and Libra Libra is not only the other as in partnership it's also open enemies it's just basically the other and Jupiter there is saying big like other people are big in our lives there's something we have to learn something we have to you know deal with so there's a big influence coming from outside us to make us more aware to, you know, to really, you know, open up, yeah, this revelation of what liberation is, what freedom is, and blah, 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 blah. Now, so we got all this going on, but at the same time, Saturn conjunct the galactic center, stationing right on it, square, well, it's a beautiful trine all year to Uranus, okay, but it's a square to this Chiron, which Venus has just come back to visit once again. And this Venus Chiron in Pisces is our wounded heart. Our feelings of separation, of abandonment from love, from unity, from Samadhi, from Nirvana, are being isolated and this this wound wants to be healed so it's interesting that you know source kind of sets this whole thing up you know it's like okay they've got to like deal okay you know with the closed heart the inability to love the fear of vulnerability of exposing of surrendering in order to fully merge unite and connect yeah, with the jungle, we, you know, with, you know, with the hostile environment. It's just like they're still playing out this game of predator and prey. Yeah, and perpetrator and victim. It's still going on. And there will not be this new birth into this new paradigm, into this liberated reality until, okay, this wound of separation is healed and there is a raising of the vibration, a raising of the consciousness into seeing, okay, the divine order. This is Saturn on the galactic center. Yeah, there's like a divine plan. That is what is just like so cool about astrology, man. It's just like, yeah, 
you know, it's, it's like it's laid out. It's really awesome. It's really beautiful. And so I want to talk about, you know, what I mean with this mantra today because it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> some of you may get it. Some of you will go, what? What? That's a head scratcher, man. <laughs> Expanding into my future, I confront my limiting past. The test to see if both can be transformed by me at last. It just kind of came to me. I had to kind of figure it out myself while I was sleeping last night. You know, it's very interesting. I'm going to put a capital M on me because when we talk about my future, okay, and you know, and my past and myself and me, what are we talking about? My ego, my physical body, uh, uh, you know, my, my consciousness, uh, my spiritual liberated self. There are many aspects, many dimensions to the word me and to I. Yeah, I can be different than me. <laughs> so, you know, what, I, what I'm talking about here is that it's very interesting for me to see that Saturn, check this out, this is freaking amazing, man. It wasn't just Uranus conjunct Pluto in the mid 60s. Guess what? If we go back and we take Saturn back around to when it was conjunct to Chiron, that's when this cycle began. It's a third quarter square. Saturn has gone all the way around to 270 degrees. Well, it started, guess when? In April of 1966. And it was where? At 23 degrees of Pisces. It's right where Chiron is now. Chiron is at 23 degrees in February. It was 51 years ago. If you're like 51 now, it's like you were born with this Saturn Chiron conjunction. And now, it's coming around and the third quarter square is this crisis in consciousness. And this crisis in consciousness has to do, I looked at the Sabian symbol, okay, for that conjunction. It's a seed that was sown in 1966. And it's a group of people on a small island surrounded by a vast ocean, all acting together something like that. I mean, and this is like an intense need to learn socialization process, how to get along with each other, how to work with each other, how to live together. And part of this Aquarian age, Aquarius is community and groups. And Uranus is diversity. So I'm just thinking about this whole thing and I'm thinking about this Saturn, you know, conjunct that galactic center. I'm just trying to wrap this all together. So you got to bear with me. Yeah. Because, and, and I also did a reading yesterday, you know, with this, uh, there's a whole group of people born in like 89 with this uh, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune conjunction in late Sag, early Capricorn. And this is, a, this is a group of very powerful soul beings, yeah, 88, 89, 90, that came in. Okay, these indigo kids, they're here to like really deal and alter and change. Okay, they're all turning 27, they're having their Saturn return coming up here, yeah. And it's just like, you know, this is a very powerful generational group. And what are they dealing with? And it just really came through yesterday. We're dealing with Capricorn and Saturn and Saturn in Sagittarius on the galactic center, this is all about morals. What is moral? And what is ethical? And what is true? And what is natural? Yeah? These are the questions we really need to be working with to birth a new society, to birth a new culture that is independent and free and allowing diversity, yet able to have a cohesiveness 
and a cooperative atmosphere wherein everyone is appreciated, treated with dignity, yes, and respect. So this is what this Saturn square Venus and Saturn square Chiron, it's like, we got to get this, yeah? And we got to get this galactic truth, this natural law, which is what Sagittarius is all about. What is that about? And these are the questions we need to be struggling with. And some of them that come to me, stem cell research, yeah? Is this cool? Is this natural? Is genetic engineering, is that cool? Is that natural? Is changing our sex, okay, changing our bodies, you know, uh, natural, okay, you know, uh, what, what else? We have these moral, ethical questions, okay, and we can already see, right, gay marriages have been legalized, you know. And, and we, we move into all of this, how much, what is natural and what is not natural? And what is divine law and what is scientific uh, perversion? Yeah? And, 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 and we're really looking at, you know, this whole means of technology, you know, is becoming so much more powerful of a tool and Uranus rules technology. And this new age is, you know, all about this Tesla and all about, you know, moving into free energy and autonomy. Yes, we are autonomous. Does that mean anybody can shoot anybody? What about youth in Asia? Do, does everybody have the right to suicide? Does everybody have the right to die whenever they want? You know, and it should not be against the law, you know. And should we have assisted suicides? Yeah, for people that want to leave. Okay, you know, and just like this whole in vitro, you know, fertilization, you know, and test tube babies and, you know, looking at this whole Pluto, the gates of life and death coming in and going out. Okay, so, you know, this, you know, this new science, this new technology, this new society that we are birthing, okay, can really go wild and it can go, you know, it can go anarchy, right? It can go crazy. It can go to where you have maniacs, okay? Uranus rules the nervous system. It also rules mental instability and insanity, yeah? And where do the pharmaceutical drugs come in, yeah? You know, do you, do you, you, know, do you treat certain conditions or do you just absolutely say absolutely not? No drug for anything, okay? You know, I'm going to let this schizophrenic, you know, just like suffer or whatever and, and not allow, you know. Uh, so it, there, it's like, where do pharmaceutical drugs fit in? These are all these kinds of questions that we personally and individually, yeah, can deal with, you know, and, and solve and settle, okay. How about our sexual norms, you know, is sleeping with everybody, Okay, you know, it's just like the sexual experience. And this is the 60s, free love. Was born with the hippies in the 60s, right? We're now coming back to, okay, well now we, you know, you gotta have a condom. <laughs> you know, it's like, yeah, you can be free, but you better wear something and be safe. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a perfect Saturn square Venus, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love everybody, but you know, not, not, not all the way. <laughs> <laughs> Got to have that skin, that separation in between, you know. But, you know, so there's like this whole kind of, you know, there's these dilemmas, right? You know, the whole institution of marriage and, and, and how about children, okay? You know, does every, are we going to just have, you know, uh, uh, you know, five adults raising, you know, uh, 20 kids and, uh, you know, everybody's the parent and everybody. I mean, we can move into all these different social forms, but. We need to do it consciously. That's the capital M, is consciousness. The witness, the observer, the spiritually awakened, high vibration that is looking. It's not from ego, separate self of I, me, my, survive, conquer, control, dominate you know, do everything I want, but not allow everybody else to do everything they want if it bothers me. 
So this is like, you know, these are all the issues that we're kind of dealing with. And this Mercury retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Venus retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, I mean, all these retrogrades is like sweep up in front of your own backyard. And how can we transform the past? We cannot transform what happened as physical events. What we can transform is our attitude and what we take out of the experience. We can have a failed relationship and we can blame the other person. We can feel victimized. We can hold on to resentment. We can never love again. We can shut our heart. We can just like be hurt. We can stay in that place. Or now, during these retrogrades, we can reflect. We can remember. We can reevaluate. Yeah, we can re, you know, redo, remake, revolt. <laughs> yeah. And move and change through what? Well, I think Chiron, Venus, okay, and Neptune in the South Node is still all the stuff in Pisces. Pisces is about forgiveness, about compassion, and about understanding. And you forgive yourself, and then you let go of blame, and you have compassion, and you turn every experience into an uh, evolutionary educational growth experience and you understand that the that the future this is the this is the coexistence of free will and fate they are coexisting this is a dualistic polarized paradoxical reality that we live within the third dimension is totally set okay you know, we have the etheric body, which we have very little control over. But the astral body, we have consciousness. And we can really interpret, okay, the events of the past. And liberate our future by actually liberating ourselves from the past. Uranus has to free itself from Pluto in Capricorn in order to fully realize the extent of its own freedom. So we liberate ourselves. We do not liberate ourselves from some external authority. We liberate our consciousness and are automatically, you know, liberated and freed from the constraints of the outside world because it's only a huge big mirror. I might have to listen to this Pele report again myself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wrap your <laughs> wrap your mind around that, man. <laughs> yeah. Where the spirit meets the body where the spirit meets you know th through this mind the heart mind I want to call it you know this is really like opening with the heart thinking with the heart using that heart as yes the method and the means of expanding into my future not with my ideas and my plans and my strategies and you know looking for what Pluto in Capricorn is obsessive compulsive about control and physical financial security. That's not what Chiron and Neptune in Pisces is bringing forward for us. And that's not what is going to birth a new paradigm, right? So it's just like, yeah, no wonder the Uranus is breaking free of that. Oops. <laughs> Well, I went on ranting and raving out there in the park for, uh, you know, quite a while. I, uh, the, the camera stopped and I forget what I said, <clears throat> but, uh, getting back here, I see that I'm short. So I just want to wrap it up a little bit here and say that, uh, yeah, the, this mantra is about using the big eye, 
capital M for me to change my past and change my future through my spiritual awakened observer witness self yeah so the mantra one more time is expanding into my future I confront my limiting past the test to see if both can be transformed by me at last yeah so in our meditative states just like go in there and I'll tell you if you you know if you I, I, I know you know Eckhart Tolle and the power of the now and you know we're all into the now and the future meets the past in the now and we want to be in that now and we have been given memory we have been given egos we are spiritual beings in these ego bodies and so much of our evolution just look at evolution evolution occurs through time and so that we want to use our time here we came into the third dimension to use time to play with time to mess with time to change ourselves through time so yes we can be in the now and that is a beautiful beautiful amazing state you know uh, you know that's the feminine state and you know we also are able to really expand in both directions into the future and the past making the now an even larger moment <laughs> namaste aloha so much love. <laughs>